Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Why did you run for state representative, and who was the first person you told when you decided to run again? Well, I was asked by my representative at the time, who was Mary Liz Holberg, and uh, she uh, decided to move out of the new redistricted area, and we had been neighbors, and so I pretty much did not have running for state representative on my radar screen. But she was also someone who encouraged me to run for school board eight years ago. So when she said, you know, would you consider running for the House of Representatives, I'm like, sure, why not? Uh, give me a chance, and what do I have to lose? I was currently not up for re-election on school board, so it seemed like the right time back in 2012. And then after narrowing, you know, narrowly losing that race by 170 votes, uh, 21,200, it seemed like an opportunity to run for it again, especially since our kids were graduating from high school. It seemed the logical time to transition off the school board anyway and let someone else take over that role. And I had always sort of uh, been involved at the state capitol because a lot of the things that happen in education generate from the state capitol or even um, Washington, D.C. So I had started doing some advocacy from that standpoint uh, prior years earlier with my involvement with the Minnesota School Boards Association, the Minnesota State High School League Boards. Can you describe your district and tell us what you're looking forward to most as serving as a representative for your constituents? My district is House District 56B, which is more or less Central Burnsville and Northwest Lakeville. And it's a community I've lived in for 27 years, and I've, I've really enjoyed it. I started a business there, in, uh, was a drugstore business in 1986, and um, sold that in 2006. So it was something that uh, I felt was important to be able to help businesses get started with my work as a commercial realtor. I've enjoyed um, working with people who are just getting started. So that's been something that I'm hoping to advocate for is that small business owner, as well as helping people get higher paying jobs. Uh, there's a lot of underemployment in our community and uh, a lot of college debt. So how can we better align our workforce with the educational system that we have in place so that, that when these students get their post-secondary education, that they have a high paying job that's available for them and the manufacturers and the other businesses that can't find the skilled workforce that they need will have that uh, skilled workforce so that we can help grow the economy and make it more prosperous, I think, for all Minnesotans. What do you see as the biggest issue facing the state? Well, right now, I think uh, what we've seen in the past is that you don't have some viewpoints being taken into consideration. And when you don't have all ideas, I think, on the table, you don't necessarily have the best outcomes. So I'm hoping that we can be a little bit more innovative and creative on how we can solve some of the challenges that we're seeing. There's a lot of needs out there, and there's only so many limited resources. So how can we become a more effective and more efficient government that we can provide the services for the needs that are out there and prioritize those needs, as well as making sure that the delivery models that we have are doing the job that they're supposed to be doing. What do you always keep on you and why? Maybe it's a cell phone. Yeah, I definitely always keep a cell phone. Uh, yeah, that's, that's probably you know, the most connected thing. If you leave without your cell phone, it's like leaving without an appendage. Um, you have to go back and, and find it or you feel really disconnected. Uh, I always also like to have some beverage of a Diet Mountain Dew or a coffee or something like that too. Thank you for taking the time to sit down and join us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.